everybody, welcome to Kegolasso. We got a special one-on-one with Hibernian US-based owner Ron Gordon. Hibs, by the way, ended third in the Scottish Premiership, and now they have a Scottish Cup final against St. Johnston this weekend. It's a great interview. He talks about the Scottish Premiership, his views on Hibs, who also, by the way, have Europe for next season, his thoughts on the European Super League, and so much more. Kiego Lasso begins right now. Football in Scotland ends its season this weekend. That's a Scottish Cup final takes place on Saturday at Hampden Park, which is also meant to host some games for the Euros this summer. It's St. Johnston against Hibernian. Hibs, who ended third in the premiership behind Rangers and Celtic, look to win the cup for only the second time in 119 years, though their most recent win was in 2016. So fans do remember this type of final. Hibs have a great history. And it was in 1955-56 when they took part in their first ever European Cup. They reached the semifinals that year and actually became the first ever British club to play in European competition. There was the famous five era, league titles in the 50s, but also heartache as they were relegated in 2013-2014. But now that they're back after a few years and after ending third, they have Europe and could actually get a group stage spot in the Europa League. So there's a lot at stake. And let's not forget, everybody, that Gibbs gave my Aston Villa the greatest player in the universe, Super John McGinn. So with that, here with me is the club's owner, US-based Ron Gordon, who took over in 2019 as majority shareholder. Ron, welcome to CBS Sports and Que Golazo. How are you, my friend? Very well, Luis. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Listen, before anything else, Ron, Everybody needs to know that you are now my official, you're officially my favorite guest. You know why? Because you, my friend, were born and raised in Peru. Una causa. Estoy hablando con mi paisano. Un paisano, tu paisano total, una causita, un ceviche, un lomito saltado. It's all happening. I love it. I absolutely love it. Please explain to me your family heritage, how this happened, and when did you leave Peru for the U.S.? Well, I was born in Peru. Uh, my, my grandfather went to Peru from England. He married my grandmother, who was Peruvian. He never left. I don't know what she did. A little <laughs> juego de cintura, and she never left. He never left. Uh, my dad was born there, and I was born in Peru as well. Uh, my parents, unfortunately, got divorced, and my mother married an American. And so uh, remarried an American who became my stepfather. And so at uh, the age of 14, I basically, or 15, basically left Peru. Um, to come to the United States. And uh, as I told my stepfather, I said he was my green card, <laughs> which was good. Uh, anyway, I came to the U.S. and uh, and I've been here ever since, although I've had the opportunity to travel and, and live all over the world, really. So it's, it's been kind of in, in, incredible. But I go to, to, to Peru quite often. I have a lot of friends um, that, you know, is the friends of your youth. You never forget about them. They're, they're your friends for life. And so I love going to Lima, uh, although I'm, I'm like, at the end, I, don't, I, can't, I can't even look at a Pisco Sour because I've just had so many that it's crazy, <laughs> but good. So that's, and you know, I grew up with football. I, I followed La U, went to many Clásicos, many you know, games of La Selección Peruana in my day, who were some of the, the, the great players, uh, Hector Chumpitas, Roberto Chale, eh, oh, a, a whole bunch. So I, I loved it. Cubillas, of course. Cubillas, uh, Nene Cubillas, which, uh, of course, Nene Cubillas. Well, I take it, Ron, that the 1978 World Cup game between Peru and Scotland was a conflicted one for you, was it? Well, it, was, it wasn't really. I was uh, into <laughs> Peru and I'm still, I asked, they asked me the same question. I go, I really, well, now I'm a little bit more conflicted. But actually, it's amazing how the Scots remember that game <laughs> very, very vividly. Oh, my, I have, my very good friend is Andrew Downey, the journalist Andrew Downey, and he never lets me forget it about that. <laughs> That's the truth. But it's amazing. I, I love the fact that you have this Peruvian in you as well, and of course, your Scottish heritage. Um, listen, I want to quickly ask you about something. Let's talk now about hips. Uh, they ended third in the Premiership for the first time in 16 years. It's a tremendous achievement, given the power of Rangers and Celtic, of course. Europe is a definite now with the Conference League, but maybe even more. How, how do you feel about the team and the season so forth? Oh, I, mean, I, I feel fantastic. I, I mean, honestly, it's been an exciting and, you know, we've had our ups and downs like any, any club in a campaign would have. Uh, but for us to finish third is a major accomplishment. 
Uh, in the last year and a half, we revamped the team significantly. So we brought it, we balanced, uh, we, we lowered the, the age, the, the starting age, the average age. Uh, we've created a much more balanced and I think um, dynamic team. We have speed, we have uh, creativity, we have a little bit of fight that we didn't have um, a, a year and a half ago. Um, you know, making a change to bring Jack Ross in as our manager, I think was a very important uh, you know, at the end of the day, your manager is kind of a critical, a critical appointment. Um, so he's done a, a great job. And I really honestly, when, when the team is playing with joy and happiness and, and you can see it, that we play a very exciting, positive type of football. Um, and I think the fans are loving it. And, you know, to, to finish third, when you look at the, our budget compared to a Rangers or a Celtic, you go, wow, this is a major accomplishments you know and, and and we have teams that are below us who have bigger budgets than we do so um so it's, it's a great great accomplishment and and you know i hope that we'll be able to build on this because it's a long-term game plan for us at hibs no absolutely i i see a lot of atalanta in in hibernian a lot, a lot of uh, you know how they achieve so much in Serie A, hibernian as well in the scottish premiership do you uh, talk to me a little bit about the struggles of this season during a pandemic because we know obviously the scottish premiership passionate fans, a passionate nation, but it's obviously from a marketing perspective, not as big as a premier league, et cetera. How difficult has it been uh, through a pandemic? Well, super different from a financial perspective. I mean, a big haircut, you know, so we, we obviously dug into our, uh, one of the great things in my uh, investment in Hibs was that I was able to eliminate the debt in, infuse some cash into the club. Um, and, and, you know, put it in a position where it was, you know, kind of sitting, sitting pretty, let's, let's, call it call it that and you know a year and a half later we're depleting our cash and we're in a in a difficult position but uh but you know despite that i think we've done some good things so we've been able to reload our our our, our cash we had some great supporters the season ticket holders supported the club thanks to them uh we've been able to um to really kind of perform as we have um so I, the financial thing was the, the biggest hit. And unfortunately, then we had to obviously downsize the, the entire club, things like hospitality and, uh, you know, kind of game day activities, all that, the, the academy, everything was shut down, basically. Um, well, two reasons. One is from, you know, from a public health perspective, we needed to do that. And number two, of course, we needed to cut costs. And really, our focus was just the first team. What do we need to do to put together the best, the, the best infrastructure to support the, the first team. And that's really what we've done. And I think it's paid off. Um, in a way, you know, this is just an observation of mine, but the focus on the first team, I think has helped because there's no, not been any distractions about development and trading and, and the academy and infrastructure and things like that. Uh, we focused just on the first team. And I think that that's, uh, I think to some degree paid off. Yeah, and of course you have uh, Hibernian women to, to, to right. as well take care of as well. Obviously they have been, affected as well how much uh you know obviously ending third is a major deal winning the scottish cup again would be huge does that a lot of that depend on how much investment you're going to put into that squad in the first team for the summer well if we win i uh, i think the club will be in a, in a in a stronger position to make some investments i mean we'll be in europe and i want us to try to go as deep as I, as we can in europe uh you know in, in the past the club has had a reputation of selling players uh, very quickly and, and, you know, kind of getting cash in the door. I am of, of a different opinion. I think we need to build a competitive team. Uh, there'll be times when we have to sell, no doubt. And that's part of the, the business of football. But, um, but ultimately, my number one goal is to compete. And, and then within that, if there's an opportunity for us to, um, to move some, yeah, and you have to take the balance. The, the club's needs, sometimes the players, you know, for them an opportunity to go play in the Premier League in England or in the Championship in England or anywhere really is an opportunity to make more money. And we certainly want to support our players to make sure that, you know, that you have a 10, 15 year career as a football player. We want to make sure that our players have an opportunity to maximize that opportunity. Absolutely. Hey, listen, you got to go to Peru and see if you can get someone from Universitario. I mean, they won a Copa Libertadores game yesterday against Independiente del Valle. Maybe there's some talent there that you can snag. Well, I'm going to try. Let me see what's there. <laughs> the, weather, gonna... the weather could be a little tricky for them. But, <laughs> but other than that, I think it'd be good. Hey, listen, we got Rodrigo Vilca in Newcastle right now. I think if he can handle it, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe even more. <laughs> I listen, agree. Um, 
Okay, so what, what did you make? Let me ask you something because uh, we all know, you know, let's talk a little bit about COVID for a second. We know how many clubs from all over the world have suffered as a result of it. But I think Scottish football, especially so, given no title sponsor for the Premiership or the Cup, right? So I believe that you are chair now of an SPFL task force to help with clubs as COVID continues to affect them. Tell us more about that. Well, it's not that I'm, I'm chairing it. I've kind of spearheaded a, a, a group to to look at ways in which the the league can uh, can become more commercially vibrant. Uh, as as you pointed out, Scotland has the highest attendance uh, of any c country in Europe per capita football. So the the passion of the fans is there, and they love their clubs, they love the league, um, and they follow football like crazy. So you know, for us not to have sponsors is is kind of you 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 kind of scratch your head and you go how can that be how can that be yeah it's insane uh, but there's, there's some work some work that needs to get done this which is another reason why the the COVID impact you know Scotland most Scottish clubs live off their attendance off their gate and so you know we don't have huge TV contracts it's a small country um, so you know other countries like Spain or or England or Italy they have huge they have huge television contracts and those those make make a difference but for us attendance is a, is kind of the number one the number one revenue stream so um you know I, I guess what i'm trying to do with the league is just look and brainstorm best practices see what we could do to strengthen both the brand of the league as well as the um the kind of corporate uh you know marketing uh, and and sales infrastructure to make sure that we that we have more sponsors, better sponsors, uh, create more products because that is another thing that we're not we're not doing. But you know what I will say is that everybody in the league has been very responsive to the idea. All the clubs, um, so we have you know the big clubs as well as the little clubs saying, you know what, let's let's see what we could do to um, to try to strengthen our game and our league. And th that's the whole goal here is to see what we could do to strengthen the game. You know, Scotland. Um, apart from the, the, the passionate support that it has, uh, you know, if you, if you really look at the last three or four years from a European coefficient, Scotland would be easily in the top 10. Yeah. Um, and so you know, for, for teams like Rangers now to be automatically into the Champion League group stage, huge. Celtic will have to qualify in, you know, for us to be able to play in Europe, Aberdeen to play in Europe and go in. This, this is growth for, for our game and, and, and the league. So we, we want to promote that. We want to do as much as we can to strengthen the league and the clubs that are part of it. Yeah, and to your point, Scotland, uh, because you rely so much on match attendance, is very community-focused as well. You have to make sure that you represent the community and the area, I'm sure. So this kind of segues into my next question because I really want to know your thoughts on the European Super League. Uh, it's 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 uh, short, but still very uh, effective and potent influence, at least for those weeks and how really it's the complete opposite of what you're talking about. Right. It was about the bigger pie being shared by the bigger boys and everybody else uh, picks up the scrubs. What, what, what did you make of the European Super League and everything that came with it? Well, I was super disappointed. I was absolutely disgusted, really. I just thought. Is an incredible example of greed and selfishness. I mean, all those those clubs would have destroyed the entire European football ecosystem, the ecosystem of football. So it, it would have been profits for the few at the expense of the well-being of the many. And I just was shocked at the greed that 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 group exhibited, uh, and they didn't really care who they left in their wake. Uh, so, you know, when, when you go into football, you have to see yourself as a trustee, as a steward, as a servant of your club, of your community, of the game. And that was the furthest, furthest thing from their mind. And so I, I'm very glad that it kind of fizzled out very quickly. It would have been destructive. And I think, you know, I, I'm not sure that it would have gotten traction, but really it was just a shame to see such selfishness um, kind of take over the game. And I'm glad it was a very few. Um, clubs, I, I'm glad that many of them came to their senses very, very quickly. I know we still have a couple of holdouts out there, which is a shame, uh, but um, but hopefully those will line up. You know, it, it's clubs that really are just, I, I think, way, to, way, way, way. They already have they already have the biggest budgets in the world, and they wanted to essentially take the icing, the cake, the cherry on top, the whole thing. It was just incredible. 
So I'm glad that that didn't work. It was a, it was a shame. Yeah, it puts, uh, unfortunately, it puts a lot of uh, foreign owners in a very bad position. Actually, I just read a very good article about the owners of Leicester City. Yeah, a Thai family and just their commitment is really an example of what football ownership, no matter where you're from, should be all about. Yeah, no, 100%. How optimistic, Ron, are you for the future of Scottish football? I'm, very, I'm super optimistic. That's one of the reasons why the investment for me, you know, apart, I've, I've fallen in love with my club. It's an easy club to fall in love with. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's an exciting personal journey for me. Uh, but I really honestly think that the future of Scottish football is, is very, very bright. The league is underperformed, I think. You know, we've let uh, a couple of clubs like Celtic, particularly Celtic over the last decade or so, to kind of lead the way, which is great. But I'd love to see more clubs get into Europe and, and compete at a higher level. Uh, I, you know, at the end of the day, the money shows, on, shows up on the field. So if we need to grow revenues. That's the big reason why I'd like to spearhead this and see what we can do to grow revenues. Because eventually it shows up on the field. So no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when, you, when you look at the top clubs, the reason they're the top clubs is because they have the most money. Yeah. And so yeah, we, we need to do the same thing for the Scottish game. Yeah. You know, at our scale, of course. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's bring in Kakala to one of the sponsors. How about that? Do you think that could happen? That, that would be lovely. <laughs> that would be lovely. Do you know if they're interested? I haven't I seen it in Coca-Cola in Scotland, but maybe we can start distributing it. Let's. This is well. This is the official public uh, shout out to Inca Cola. Uh, for those who don't know, Inca Cola is the the Peruvian drink. Coca Cola rules the land everywhere around the globe except one country, and that's Peru with Inca Cola. Though Coca Cola owns now Inca Colas, but yeah, let's get let's get them to be the sponsor. Ron, that would be incredible. That would, that would be great. That would be great. So all right. Um, Listen, let's go back to the cup for a second. Uh, the final question about the final. A uh, huge one, second one uh, that you can win in 119 years. St. Johnston, of course, they have their own objectives as well. How are you feeling about this final? There's going to be some fans in the stadium as well, I believe, right? Uh, 600 or so? They're not. They're not. They decided not to because oh, Glasgow. that's a shame. They're in Glasgow and they're having, uh, they're having a bit of a spike. So, um so there, there are not going to be any fans, unfortunately. That's so recent be- news was that maybe it was going to be around 600, but now the latest because of COVID, uh, there, it's going to be an empty final. Yeah, exactly. Closed doors. Right. Unfortunate, you know, because if football is not the same without fans, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but it still should be a great game and an exciting opportunity for us to, you know, to, to show what we can do. St. Johnson has been a tough opponent for us. We've had, we've had difficulty with them that we lost to them a few weeks ago. In the league game, and then they they you know they they gave us a, a a bit of a thumping in in the semifinal of the league cup a couple of uh, months ago, three or four months ago. Yeah, so, you know the, we you know, the truth of the matter is we we're not underestimating St. Johnston because they've been a great club and they're very competitive. Um, so we need to yeah you know, we need to play our best game and um, and on the other hand, for to for us to legitimately claim the cup, we kind of have to beat St. Johnston. So this presents us with the 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 ideal opportunity to to show what we can do. But the club's been playing well. Our, our team has been playing very, very well, both ways, going forward uh, and, and, and much more, um, I think, structured defensively. So I'm, I'm very excited. We have a lot of fight. We've, we've had a couple of tough games. We beat Aberdeen and Aberdeen to clinch third place. Um, and that was a very, you know, we played, apart from scoring a, a wonderful goal, um, we, we, we held our defensively very, we played very gritty defense, which was excellent. Um, and then, you know, we have, Three strikers, or our, our, our front line is combined for over 50 goals. And then so it's, um, it's a very exciting front line uh, with some speed, some creativity, um, good in the air. It's, it's got some good things going for it. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited about our possibilities. Well, we're exciting to see it. We're excited for Hibs. I think Jack Ross has done a tremendous job. I think you continue to represent what uh, foreign owners can do in Europe and, of course, Britain and Scotland. Ron Gordon, Peruvian, my causa. Muchas gracias, compadre. Thank you so much, my friend, for joining us on CBS Sports and Quejo Lasso. Gracias a ti, Luis. So we'll see you soon. Look forward to catching up again. Hey, everybody. I want to thank Ron Garden for joining me today. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Que Golazo Pod. We are also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Of course, as you watch this, you know that we're on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Que Golazo. Make sure that you keep subscribing and share with your friends. Have a great, great rest of your day.